I wanted to share with you guys my top five favorite psychedelics that have helped me with my own personal transformation. Now, I will take into account the personal growth and healing aspects of it, as well as the pleasantness of the experience itself. I'll also briefly cover the unique characteristics of each substance and how they differ to other drugs subjectively, as well as if I would recommend them or not. Disclaimer, I do not condone the use of any drugs, whether it's legal or illicit, so please do your own research as these substances can be severely dangerous if you're not careful. Jeez, I thought you were cool, Tom. Do you have to do a disclaimer on every video? Yes. This channel is completely fan-funded by you guys, so for us to continue making high-quality content, we need the support. So if you want to contribute, check out Patreon. As soon as we hit our first milestone, I'll be able to make some amazing pieces of content that you guys have been waiting for. So yeah, go check it out if you're interested. Alternatively, you can buy merch as well. That helps us out a lot. I'll leave links in the description below. Before I start this video, please note that this is my personal list, and this is not like the top five psychedelics ever of all time. And I understand that there's a lot of crossovers between different psychedelics. So when I talk about this, substances these are based on my own subjective experience as well as general trip reports that I hear enjoy the video I apologize if that was creepy Lysergic acid diethylamide, or LSD, is a semi-synthetic compound extracted from the rye fungus. LSD is considered to be an entheogen, which can catalyze intense spiritual experiences. And this is a substance that I used to devalue compared to like the organic plant medicines, such as ayahuasca and psilocybin mushrooms. But after having a very powerful experience uh, dropping 1P LSD with Adam from Psych Substance, I stand corrected. I believe that you can go just as deep from LSD as other psychedelics. And I think out of all psychedelics, LSD has probably had the most influence on society, especially in the 60s era. Even though this substance is incredibly powerful, which I have high respect for, from my own personal experience, I still find this to be the least profound. Granted, I've only taken tested LSD once in my life, which was technically 1P LSD, but many people would say that these are very, very similar experiences. The first thing that comes to mind when I think about LSD is that it has this very electric, digital vibe to it, unlike ayahuasca and shrooms more organic, flowy vibe. And this reminds me of my girlfriend when she goes, LSD is more like Mushrooms is more like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So what does LSD feel like and what so, do shrooms feel like? So LSD feels very just Whereas mushrooms feels very <laughs> You heard it first folks <laughs> Very scientific of you. <laughs> it sounds so stupid for people who haven't experienced either substances, but hey man, sometimes sound effects can explain a subjective experience a hell of a lot more than what words ever could. I usually find my headspace to be a little bit more clear when compared to shrooms, and I'm also a lot more in control, at least emotionally. If I'm going to a dark place or negative emotions start to bubble up on LSD, there's a much higher chance of me avoiding that and turning it around compared to shrooms, which I have much less control. Don't get me wrong, LSD can still be a massive head fuck and confuse the fuck out of you, but just generally speaking, you're more clear headed. But from a healing and personal growth perspective, I just personally don't find it as wise of a teacher as I would ayahuasca or mushrooms and maybe this has something to do with nature holding memory i don't know but this is just what i feel and what i've experienced and many could completely disagree with this i'm sure and who knows maybe i haven't gone deep enough with lsd but uh, i don't know and besides i don't appreciate the come down that i get from lsd I just feel too like, oh, I don't know, down and fuzzy and I don't feel clear headed, I don't feel good. Don't get me wrong, I highly respect LSD as a tool, it just doesn't resonate with me personally as much as the others. That being said, I think LSD is a favorite among recreational psychedelic users. MDMA is a synthetic compound that has resurfaced in the scientific community for its powerful therapeutic effects, particularly for treating PTSD. MDMA is the active compound in ecstasy, or in Australia as we call them, googs or pingers. Oh, I fucking love me pingers, mate. Fucking pinging for days, can't. MDMA has got to be the most consistently positive drug I have ever experienced by far. It can be a beautiful heart-opening medicine that can bring down the walls and de-armor 
our ego's defenses so that we can open up and talk about things that we may have swept under the rug. And this is why it can be so therapeutic and why it's the drug of choice when treating war veterans with PTSD. Now all the scientific studies that you hear is MDMA assisted psychotherapy. It's not as easy as popping a pill mate and just being all boop cured. My boop echoed. This is what happens when you take too many drugs, kids. My first MDMA experience was on my 21st, and man, oh man, was... <sighs> such a beautiful night. I made a video on this a while back, I'll leave a link in the description, but this changed my life. And unintentionally too, because my intention wasn't to drop ecstasy pills so I can heal or grow in any significant way, it was seriously just to get fucked up because that was a stage that I was at. My mind definitely opened up dramatically at least in terms of music, which of course bled into other aspects of my life. I used to be the biggest heavy metal purist and I hated anything to do with like electronic music. But as soon as I popped that pill, I was like, oh my God, I understand now. And every time I think of MDMA, I get this warm, fuzzy feeling, which is so beautiful because I never even have to take that drug again, but I can attain that feeling. Like I don't need it anymore, which makes it even that much more powerful. That warm orgasmic feeling that just radiates love and it's like everyone's your best friend and you can, oh, it's the best. It's the best. I haven't done MDMA that many times. I've probably done it like, I don't know, twice a year ever since my 21st. Intuitively, I knew that this is something that we should space out a lot. But even though MDMA is relatively safe, at least physically, it can be severely damaging to your serotonin system if you take it too often. That being said, nothing's gonna beat your first MDMA experience. So if you're looking to get that same high, it's very unlikely you're ever gonna reach it. It's like chasing the dragon. Hang on, I almost caught the dragon. So if you had an awesome life-changing moment on MDMA, don't expect to have that same experience twice. Because once you've taken MDMA or any psychedelic for that matter, you've opened up that part of your psyche forever and you can actually continue to grow and gain wisdom without the physical use of them, which makes them even more powerful. It's fucking mind-blowing, man. Speaking about my MDMA experience literally gave me that warm, fuzzy, lovey feeling right here on my chest. That's what she said, mate. Even though I've only had MDMA a handful of times, it is by far my favorite recreational drug, for sure. Like, I just love the bliss and pure love that you can experience from taking this substance and just spending time with close friends and talking about, like, really personal stuff can be so incredibly heart-opening and therapeutic. And even though partying on MDMA all night, dancing to electronic music and all that can be amazing, don't get me wrong, but you would get a lot more out of it, at least on a therapeutic perspective, if you were just to talk to someone, yeah? Especially certain issues and traumas that you sweep under the rug and you don't like to talk about, MDMA can be a beautiful catalyst to overcome those things, right? To shine the torch on it. I would say that this substance is the most abused of all the psychedelic drugs on this list and improper MDMA use can fuck you up and can leave people super depressed. Man, I've lost count of how many people I've met who have gotten severely negative side effects from taking MDMA way too often. But as long as you have a pure intention and take set and setting very seriously and space out your trips, then you should be fine for the most part. But that being said, I do not condone the use of MDMA as amazing as it is. Even though ayahuasca has positively transformed my life more than any other substance on this list, it is also the most challenging substance I have ever come across. The reason why ayahuasca isn't on top of my list, which it was for the longest time, is not only due to the unpleasantness of the experience, like the throwing up and feeling ill and like even just the taste of it, even though some ceremonies can be extremely blissful, of course. But because of the terror trip I had not too long ago, which brought me into the brink of suicide. I could have taken my own life if I wasn't taken care of by professionals and I wasn't in the right set and setting. So, like, it scared the absolute bejesus out of me. That being said, I personally love the shamanic ritual of going into the Amazon and spending time in a retreat away from society and drinking this sacred brew and going through this journey of personal transformation with other people from all walks of life. Like, I love that. It would be phenomenal if every substance got the same treatment as ayahuasca. As many of you may know, the active compound in ayahuasca is dimethyltryptamine or DMT. And one of the things that fascinates me most about ayahuasca is that it's made up of chemicals that our body produces. From a healing perspective, ayahuasca is phenomenal. It has many medicinal properties that can treat 
mental illnesses like depression, anxiety, PTSD, bipolar disorder, as well as physical illnesses such as MS, diabetes, and many others. And some even claim that it can successfully treat their cancers and tumors and things like that. But this is all anecdotal evidence. There is no scientific evidence to back this up, uh, at least as of yet. And to me, it doesn't really matter if it's ayahuasca that's treating all these things or if it's just placebo or combination of both, but if something works, it works. I think ayahuasca more so than any psychedelic on this list has helped so many people across the world with incurable diseases. Like, you've heard this story a thousand times. Ayahuasca is a perfect example of a medicine of duality. It will bring you to your deepest, darkest fears and shine the light on it and make you deal with shit that fuck you didn't even know you had. And it will do so without remorse. Be particularly careful with your intention with ayahuasca as it can show you the complete opposite of what you want just to polarize it. And hey, sometimes ayahuasca can play nice and show you something nice but more often than not, it's gonna give you the experience that you need, which usually isn't what we want. Ayahuasca can make you acutely aware of everything that you've ever fucked up on, all the traumas, all the negative personality traits that you have, but most of the time, this is all for the best. Visually speaking, this can be the most intense psychedelic, assuming that you're not giving a tourist dose like most retreats do. This is orally active DMT after all, and it can take you to fractal land and hyperspace and, give you visions that ugh, it's just so impossibly beautiful and like ugh, sometimes it's too much to handle. I've had experiences where I've got sucked into this three-dimensional geometric labyrinth which was just so overwhelming and doesn't matter where I would turn I would just infinitely fall into this fractal spiral and it was just and like I know this can sound like fun but when you go really deep into that space sometimes it's like yeah <sighs> I really did it this time, I'm never getting out. <laughs> I'm gonna be in this infinite loop forever. Fuck! Many people across the world, including Peruvian shamans and people from that sort of culture, would consider ayahuasca to be a mother sort of figure. And whether or not this is a literal feminine spirit or an archetype that is projected from our psyche, this perspective can greatly help us understand ayahuasca a little bit better, at least from a subjective standpoint, which could then help us navigate through the ayahuasca space more effectively. Don't get me wrong, it's awesome knowing about the science and what it's doing to your brain, but if you're in the midst of an infinite terror loop, you're not gonna be like, oh, this is this ayahuasca is just latching onto my serotonin receptors and blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm all good now. I just have to go left and right and left. No, it doesn't work that way. This comes from a more passive, aggressive, yin, yang, feminine, masculine energy sort of thing, which can be applied to virtually anything in life. The ayahuasca experience can be so abstract and ambiguous, full of impossibly intricate symbols and messages that can be so difficult to interpret. And just like most women, they want you to figure it out. <laughs> I'm joking, ladies. Not really. Don't hurt me. Whereas, let's say, San Pedro, which has more of a masculine energy to it, it's more likely that it's going to be a hell of a lot more direct, like, bang, this is what you got to do. Blah, it just tells you how it is. But both can be just as powerful as each other. They're just different perspectives, different energies to work with. Ayahuasca is also the most unpredictable substance I've ever experienced. But then again, this can be applied to all psychedelics, or I'm just generally speaking about my personal experience with it. In terms of ayahuasca's safety profile, it's probably one of the more dangerous ones for sure, as it's two substances mixed with one, so the unpredictability factor goes up exponentially. So if you are thinking about taking this substance, please, for the love of God, do it with a professional who has worked with this medicine for many years. It doesn't necessarily have to be with a shaman from Peru, but just do it with someone who knows what the fuck they're doing, otherwise don't do it at all. That's my advice. Shrooms, shrooms, shrooms. Man, this substance has a very special place in my heart. Uh, it is the one that started me on this psychedelic journey. Psilocybin fascinates me more than any other drug on this planet, and for good reason. First of all, it is the oldest entheogen known to man, and it's complete in and of itself, meaning that you don't need to mix another plant or brew it in a pot to get the effect. It's whole in and of itself, meaning that once it's grown on the ground, it pops up, ready to eat, mate. All good. The active compound in magic mushrooms is psilocybin, which is virtually a more evolved version of DMT. And what's cool about mushrooms is that it grows virtually everywhere in the world. So it doesn't matter if you're Australian, Swedish, Chinese, or bloody Uruguayan, 
you can find mushrooms in your country. As far as I'm concerned, this is the most underrated... Whoa, I'm so bright. Where the fuck am I going? So this is the place where I first had my heroic dose of mushrooms, which I really fucked up because I did it by myself, and this was after I came back from Peru and did my first ayahuasca experience. So I underestimated mushrooms, <laughs> which brings me to a very important point, is that magic mushrooms is the most underestimated psychedelic out there. I had this arrogance of, oh, I've experienced ayahuasca. How bad could mushrooms be? <sighs> Within half an hour, I had to message my girlfriend who fucking saved my life. Uh, not literally, but man, I, I was freaking out. It was so intense. It was almost just as intense as my ayahuasca experience. And that was just at the five gram mark. Couldn't even imagine high. Like I've done 7.5 grams, which is, hey. Speaking of mushrooms, <laughs> these ones aren't it, but look. Someone's already trying to hunt them, mate. See? That's why you gotta, you gotta be careful with mushroom picking, because this could kill you, man. You dare me to eat it? No, I'm joking. Trust me, from experience, I can tell you right now that mushrooms can take you to DMT land and beyond. All you have to do is take a high enough dose, which I would not recommend, by the way, as it... Ugh, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. If you're a beginner and you insist on having a mushroom experience, just do yourself a favor and start low. If you want to know more about the psilocybin experience, go check out my video, What Does Shrooms Feel Like? Before my first mushroom trip, I was a very closed-minded, narcissistic, unempathetic asshole, basically. Well, more of an asshole than I am now. I seriously gave no shits about other people's feelings or the state of the world or any of that crap. I would 100% of the time rather be inside playing video games and watching movies than even think about stepping outside and enjoying nature, right? I didn't appreciate this. This! Can you believe it? Crazy! And I live in Australia. I'm so fucking blessed to live in this beautiful country with amazing landscapes and even where I live and like I did I took it for granted. I was like, eh, whatever. I didn't give a shit. That is until I had my first mushroom dose, which fuck changed my life forever. It just opened up my mind in ways I couldn't imagine. It made me appreciate nature and life. Like in short, it made me give a shit. So if you guys are interested in me making my first Shrooms Experience trip report video, then let us know in the comment section below. Alright, enough mushroom dick sucking. I also have to address the negative aspects, which... Oh man, I've had some terrifying encounters with mushrooms that shook me to the core. This brings me back to my last big mushroom dose, which caused a psychotic break. And it was fucking scary. I thought I was going to die. And had... in very terrifying encounters with reality. Woo! Mushrooms are particularly merciless and ruthless. I mean, holy shit. You could be in the midst of a bad trip. You could be on the brink of suicide and the mushrooms would just be like, go, do it, fucking kill yourself. Absolutely no remorse. And even though mushrooms can be very healing, don't get me wrong, in fact, the mushroom experience can sometimes overlay with the ayahuasca experience um, at least during my experience, I said experience a lot in that sentence. I think that the healing aspects of mushrooms is more of a byproduct of the profound shifts in consciousness, right? But you never hear about mushrooms curing physical diseases like you do with San Pedro, ayahuasca, hell, even marijuana, right? Based on my research and my personal experience with this substance, I would consider mushrooms to be more of like a potion or alien technology than I would a medicine per se. I think that these substances are a lot more mysterious and deep than just chemicals that alter your brain chemistry. That's in my opinion anyway. Like I can't quite put my finger on mushrooms. It doesn't have this clear archetype like Mother Ayahuasca or Grandfather San Pedro. I don't know, it has more of this alien or they kind of vibe to it. Even just look at how the mycelium network from mushrooms work together. And mushrooms are really weird because it's not technically a plant. It's, if anything, it's genetically more similar to humans. So it's, it's, I don't know, man. In the Mexican shamanic culture, they consider mushrooms to be hongos de los niños, which implies that they have this child spirit or children spirit. And I can definitely see why in the lower doses as it does reconnect you with your inner child and awe of this world and it has this very playful nature to it for sure. But I think this belief system will get destroyed once you have the higher 
doses of mushrooms, which is, to her, it's not a childlike spirit anymore, I can tell you that right now. It's the substance that I have the closest connection with, I think. Hell, even with this YouTube channel, I have accumulated more views thanks to shrooms than any other psychedelic. Yeah, right, Tom, that's the purpose of these sacred mushrooms, to help get you views on YouTube. Yeah, I thought so too. And there'd be so many times I'd be tripping on mushrooms, and I'd feel like I'm on ayahuasca, and I'd literally see and communicate with these ayahuasca shamans who were there to heal and protect me, and vice versa, I remember I had an ayahuasca vision that I needed to go to Mexico and pursue mushrooms, that there's something there for me, and it's just where it's taking me and the lessons that I've got and the people who have helped me through this connection of mushrooms has been mind-blowing, to say the least. So the mushroom gods are on my side, I guess, or it could just be an agenda of me trying to spread their name to the world. Hmm, I haven't quite figured that out yet, but for now I'm just going to enjoy the ride. Whee! But in terms of how safe mushrooms are, like all psychedelics, physically they can be very safe. But with mushrooms in particular, it definitely has more of this confusion factor. And it does usually take longer to integrate compared to other psychedelics. Sometimes it takes me many, many, many months just to understand what the fuck I went through, you know? Whereas with Ayahuasca and San Pedro, you're more likely to understand the insights after a shorter period of time. But another thing that's cool about mushrooms is that it's free! Some of you may be surprised, but San Pedro is my favorite psychedelic of all time. It's important to know that many people have a mild experience when it comes to mescaline and San Pedro. Uh, I would argue that you're not having a large enough dose, but for some reason San Pedro resonates with my chemistry oh so well, oh so well. From a healing and personal growth perspective, this plant has helped me grow in unimaginable ways. It has given me the most crystal clear direction more so than any other substance. In fact, it was my first San Pedro experience that gave me the insight that I should maybe start a blog and YouTube channel. So who knows, maybe your mate Tom wouldn't exist if it wasn't for my first San Pedro experience. It has helped me understand duality on such a deep level and helped me be more present in everyday life. It taught me that there is no such thing as a bad experience if we learn and grow from it. And not to mention that the San Pedro experience is so gentle and loving and euphoric. It's almost like this very wise grandfather figure putting his arm around me and just showing me the beauty of life, you know? That being said, all three of my San Pedro experiences have been after going into the depths of hell with ayahuasca, so I'm sure that would play a part. Some would consider San Pedro to be nature's LSD, which I can definitely see why. It isn't as visual as, let's say, the other tryptamine drugs like psilocybin and DMT. But for me personally, I had a very, very visual experience. Like, no shit. It seemed like I was looking at this reality through one of those Google Deep Dream simulations. That being said, on one hand, my girlfriend had a very mild experience with both San Pedro ceremonies. And here I was on the other side of the garden under the blankets having like these full-on DMT visual-like experiences where it felt like my physical body was about to disintegrate into pure consciousness. Oh my god. How majestic. So it does differ from person to person. From an experiential standpoint, San Pedro is the most pleasant of all the psychedelics. Even the euphoria trumps my MDMA experiences, which is seriously saying something because it's like you have the euphoria of MDMA but you've got the mystical aspects of San Pedro and then that mixed together, oof, beautiful synergy, man, beautiful synergy. But I have to note that just because San Pedro is generally more pleasant and loving than others, it doesn't mean that it won't take you to very hellish realms. You know, I've heard stories of people getting severely damaged on a mental and emotional level after taking this stuff. I had a glimpse of the dark places that you can go on San Pedro on my last trip, and it wasn't in a good way, like dealing with my traumas or anything like that. It was just straight up, fucked up, scary shit. But even though I was having a really rough time, if I really wanted a break, San Pedro would give me a break, you know? I can just feel San Pedro being like, all right, mate, we'll give you a break, but after this, you gotta go straight back there, all right? All right. And I think part of this was like a warning shot from San Pedro. It's like, just because I'm gentle and kind, it doesn't mean that I'm gonna fuck you up if you don't respect me. So just be careful, mate. It can be very useful for life purpose stuff 
and if you're a beginner in the psychedelic world, I think San Pedro is one of the better ones to start with. I would actually recommend trying San Pedro over ayahuasca mushrooms or LSD. Um, given, of course, that you do in a professional context, and it's not hard these days. Even if you're in a country where it, where it is illegal, if you look hard enough, there's always these underground groups, man. Just look. Like, I've had incredibly beautiful, mystical experience and had very profound insights. I've had connections with divinity more so than anything. And more importantly, it's so earth-connecting. That's what I love about it. Ah, oh, it's the best, and it really shows you who you are in a gentle, not forceful way. Yeah, San Pedro, Wachuma, Abuelito Wachumito. Say that three times fast, which means Grandfather San Pedro in Spanish. Hey guys, just letting you know that I've recently launched this cool limited edition DMT molecule, sacred geometry, galaxy, whatever it is, it looks awesome. But yeah, it's only gonna be available on Teespring for 14 days, so after that, it's gonna be gone. So yeah, go check it out and get yours while you can. There'll be different styles of merch available, so like ladies' cuts, singlets, hoodies, and all that kind of stuff. Or if you wanna gift this to a special someone, then you can do that too. Yeah, but that's it for the video, guys. Just remember that this is purely my opinion based on my subjective experience. I don't take this as truth. Like, a lot of this video was like mental masturbation, but you know, I had fun with it anyway. So remember to share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I have a lot of amazing content planned for this channel, but without you guys, I won't be able to do it. So if you wanna support this channel, then go check out Patreon. That is definitely the best way to do it, as this channel is completely fan-funded by you guys, so Thank you to all you beautiful people who are supporting me on Patreon. And I'm going to start being more active on Patreon and give some exclusive perks as well. And just before I go, I'm going to be releasing a video next week, which will be like a very important update on just where I'm at at the moment and like the direction of this channel and also a big announcement. So yeah, that's it. Love you guys. See you on the next video. Peace.